Welcome to the second lesson of our first session of machine learning Zoom Camp. And we will talk, we will compare um, machine learning systems with rule based systems. So in the previous uh, lesson, we talked about uh, an example where how we can use machine learning for predicting the price of a car. And uh, now in this lesson, we will compare um, like the old way uh, of doing things without machine learning and with uh, using machine learning. And we will illustrate this uh, using a spam detection example. So imagine that uh, you have a system. So this is a system for emails, right? So usually like you have Gmail or Outlook, so where you have emails and you use this for talking to your colleagues or for work-related things, for chatting with friends and so on. So like each row here, is an email, right? And everything works well. So you can send emails, receive emails. And then at some point, users of our system start complaining about unsolicited emails. So it can be promotions, uh, about discounts that people have, uh, are, are unsubscribed to. So these unsolicited promotions, or even a fraudulent messages that try to, um, um, people try to cheat uh, other people and ask them to uh, give some money. So, and we want to fight this. So we want to fight all these emails. We don't want our users to receive these emails. So we want to develop a spam detection system. So we want to take these emails and uh, let's say have a folder for spam here uh, and send all the emails that are spam to this folder, right? So this is the system we want to develop. And for that, we want to, um, to build a classifier that classifies things into spam or not spam, right? So what we can do is we can just take all the spam messages and try to come up with um, some, uh, to find some patterns. So what makes a spam message spam, right? And what we can see here is, um, for example, um, we analyze the data and we see that all mails that come from uh, this particular email, promotions at online.com, they are all spam messages. Or we can see that if uh, a tax review uh, is in the title, then it's also a spam message. Or tax review and all the messages from this domain, uh, online.com, they are all spam messages. And we can come up with uh, rules, like, okay, if sender is promotions online, uh, dot com, then it's spam so because we did uh, some analysis and we saw that all mails from this particular sender, they're all spam, right? And then we can see if subject contains tax review, like we see here, and if the domain of the sender is online.com, then in all the examples we saw and analyzed all these messages were spam. So we can say that if title contains tax review and sender domain is online, then it's spam. Otherwise, it's a good email, right? So we have all the, these three rules, right? What we can do with these rules now, we can write a simple program and encode these rules using, for example, Python. So we just sit down and write uh, a few lines of Python code where we encode these rules saying, okay, if sender is this particular sender, promotion set online.com, then it's spam. If title contains uh, tax and review and the sender, the domain of the sender is online.com, then it's spam. In all other cases, we consider this uh, is a good email. So we, we write this code, we deploy the system and it works until people start complaining about other different unsolicited messages. And um, yeah, for example, in this case, uh, yeah, this is a different kind of email that people get that talks about deposit. So you want a price. If you want to get it, you have to pay a small fee, ten dollars, and transfer this to this account. So this is the kind of messages people start complaining about. We analyze, and we see that if a all these spam messages contain deposit, all good messages don't contain deposit. So we come with a, fee, with a rule that says, if a body contains a word deposit, then we mark this message as spam. That works fine for a little while. Um, yeah, we implement this, it works fine for a little while until a user 
uses a work deposit for a genuine person for a totally legitimate reason right so somebody pedro um, paid a deposit and now he wants to get the deposit again so he uses the word deposit but our system incorrectly classifies this message as spam and puts this into a spam folder right so we do analysis again we do uh, we see okay how we can make sure that uh, this doesn't happen so how can we separate good emails that contain the word deposit from bad emails that contain the word deposit and we come with uh, other rules and we encode these rules again with python and we do this over and over again and you can imagine that this is a never-ending process because uh, spam keeps changing the rules uh, they need uh, to to we need to keep them up to date so we constantly need to, to change them as well some of the rules don't work and we write a lot of code we wrote more we write more code more and more and more and more and at the end it becomes a nightmare to maintain all this code and uh, it's very difficult the system is just every time we change something things break in uh, different places so this is a situation when we need to think okay is there other tool that we can use to solve these problems and the other tool for this is machine learning so we can actually use machine learning to solve this problem in a different way so the way we do this is we first need to get the data and by that i mean in this particular case all the emails uh, then we need to extract some features from these emails so uh, things that uh, we can use to describe emails all these characteristics of emails then we need to extract these features and then we use uh, this to train the model and then after the, that we can once we train the model we can use this model for classifying messages into spam and not spam so for getting data what usually email providers do they have this uh, spam folder right that people can just uh, use to mark email as unwanted uh, as spam and then it usually goes to the spam folder so if we have a button like that we can just take all the data that users generated because users tell us hey this message is spam so we can take all the emails we have we can take emails that are spam we can take emails uh, that are not spam and we can use them for training the model right so we took this so we took the emails um, we took the the labels spam or not spam now we need to define and calculate features and features can be very simple like um, things like is the the title long like what is the length of the title if the title is uh, longer than uh, 10 then this feature is true if the title is 10 or less then the feature is false right and then we can features like this about the length of the body about the particular sender uh, and so on and you if you remember that this uh, that uh, these features like about uh, this particular sender or the domain or the word deposit they actually come from uh, the rules we have so most of these features uh, they are based on the rules we previously had and it's actually a good idea to start with the rules uh, so first you don't jump immediately into using machine learning so first you um, do a rule-based system and then you can use these rules as features for a machine learning system right like we did here and uh, so here we have six features each um, like this is called a binary feature because we have uh, features that are either true or false so they can only take two values that's why they're called binary features we have six of them and we can encode all our emails with this feature so let's see how we can do this so we have an email right uh, and uh, we want to extract these six features so first we look at the length of the title so the title is longer than 10 uh, 10 characters and that's why the feature is true so here like it's true but uh, yeah so we encode true as one and false as zero so for us uh, the value of this feature is true so it's one then the second feature is length of the body so the body is pretty long so this the value of this feature is also true 
Then the next one is about the sender name. So the, the email. So the email is not promotions at online.com. So that's why the value of this feature is zero. The next uh, sender is uh, not uh, this email that is long or hard to, to read. So again, the value of this feature is zero. Then uh, we see that the domain of the email is actually test.com. So if you see, let's uh, test here. Uh, so that's why, so for this particular feature, it's true. So we have one here. And the same for the last one. So the description contains the word deposit, it's here. So that's why for this particular feature, the value is uh, actually should be true. Uh, yeah. And finally, we know that this particular email is spam because the user marked this email as spam. So we know that the value, uh, so the target variable is one. So we take this and we put this as our data set. So all the features we extracted plus the target variable. And we do this for other email, for another email, for another email, and so on, until we uh, take all our emails and extract these features from, um, from them. And this is what we have, right? So we have our data set and we have the target variable, right? So this is our, our data. And what we do next is we need to use this data to train a model. So we take this. And if you remember, so we put this into a machine learning algorithm. So feature, features and uh, target variable go in. So we train a model. And sometimes we call this process of training is fitting. So we fit a model and then the output is a model. The mo model that we can use for uh, predicting uh, uh, if a message is spam or not. So we take this model. Uh, let's say we have a model here that we've uh, trained previously, right? And now for each of uh, the messages we have, we have some predictions, right? So for example, for this message, uh, our prediction is uh, uh, we say that the probability that this message is spam is 0 0.8, meaning that it's 80% likely that this message is spam, right? For example, for the, the, the second one can be 60%. Uh, maybe this one is not spam, so only 10% likelihood that this email is spam. Then maybe this one is um, 0 0.01. So very unlikely that this is spam. Um, for the next one could be, I don't know, 70% and maybe 40%, right? And then, so we have these uh, outputs from the model. So the model outputs probabilities, right? So it thinks that this message looks like spam and I'm sure about that with uh, probability. So my confidence level, let's say is 80%, right? So now we actually need to, to make a decision. Should we put this in a spam folder or not, right? So this is the decision we need to make. And we can say if something is, uh, uh, greater or equals to 0 0.5. So if something has more than 50% uh, chance of being spam, then we put this in a spam folder. So for this, uh, for this one, we say it's spam because it's uh, more than uh, 50%. So this one is also spam. This one is actually good because uh, yeah, it's less than five, uh, 0 0.5, right? It's less than 50%. So this one is also good. This one looks like spam. 70% is more than 50% and 40% is a good message, right? And uh, everything that uh, we predicted as spam, it will go to the spam folder. Everything that is good will go to the inbox. And this is how we can use our model. So now to summarize, let's illustrate the difference between these two approaches, between the rule-based systems and between uh, machine learning. So in rule-based systems, so we have software. So uh, our system, this is what we, uh, this is what we code, right? So we needed to extract some rules, to extract some rules, and write code, right? So we write some code, and uh, then we have some data. We have these emails that we want to score. So we have uh, data, 
uh, and we have code. And then uh, for these emails using this code, we uh, have predictions, right? So this is our outcome. So if, uh, if something is spam or not spam, right? So we hard code these rules into our software system and our software system makes decisions. And we, as, as we discussed, this system is uh, at some point becomes quite difficult to maintain. That's why a machine learning algorithm uh, in machine learning, uh, it's a bit different. So in machine learning, so in case of usual software, we produce outcome, right? So we hard code the outcome in the code. But in case of machine learning, outcome is the input to machine learning algorithm. So we know that something is spam and we put this uh, to a machine learning. So we say, if something is spam or not, right? And then we have the data. So this is our uh, emails. And for each email, we know if something is spam or not. So we feed this in a system and then the output is a model. And then we can use this model to make predictions for cases when we don't know the outcome. So cases when we only have data, then we can use this uh, to, uh, to make the predictions. So we take data, we take model, and it produces outcome. For cases for which we don't know whether a message is spam or not. And we can use this model in our system to sort uh, to sort messages into spam or inbox. Okay, so we talked about uh, a spam classification example and we illustrated the difference between the rule-based systems and uh, machine learning. And in the next lesson, we will talk about supervised learning. So uh, all we discussed, uh, like examples of price prediction, and uh, spam predictions. These are examples of supervised machine learning. And we formalize this concept uh, a bit more. And we talk about different kinds of supervised uh, machine learning, like regression, classification, and ranking.